Hey, what's going on future CWIs? If you guys are looking for information about the CWI exam and want to know how to pass the exam, well, you guys found the right channel. So go ahead and share, subscribe, and I'll strike that like button for more content. Hey, what's going on future CWIs? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since my last video. This one here is gonna be a good one for you guys. For those that are new to my channel, my name's Alberto. I'm a senior inspector for Southern California Gas Company that passed the CWI exam on the first try. My channel mainly focuses on part B of the CWI exam and my goal here is to share my knowledge and experience that I encountered on the exam to give you guys a better opportunity to pass on the first try. So besides the YouTube videos that I already created, I've done CWI in-person class workshops, I've done one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings to prepare candidates and have held small group sessions. I've also created affordable CWI starter packages that will jumpstart your guys' journey. So go ahead and check out my website and support the quality content to keep these videos coming. Okay, so this video is a highly requested one that has been on the back burner for quite some time. We're gonna be talking about the welder qualification test record document, how to understand it, and validate the ranges that he's qualified to. So one thing that I do want to emphasize, guys, is that you guys can't confuse procedure qualification and performance qualification. They're not the same, and it can cost you guys the exam if you guys are looking for information in the wrong section. So keep that in mind. During your exam, AWS will clearly state if it's procedure or performance. Whenever they're asking about procedure, we go to class five. If they're asking for performance, you go to clause six and all questions that pertain to the welder qualification test record document will be found on clause six and their essential variables so keep that in mind okay so let's take a look at the example document that i created for you guys during the part b exam you guys are going to encounter a few questions related to this document these questions will ask you to determine the range that the welder is qualified for based on the actual values listed here so to answer these questions correctly, you guys are going to have to reference various tables on clause six. Each table is different and provides ranges that the welder is qualified to, depending on what the question is asking. It's not that difficult. And all you guys have to do is plug in the actual values that are shown on the welder test record document to locate the appropriate qualification ranges to each table in clause six. Keep in mind that there's always going to be some sort of footnotes involved to each table so that could change a certain situation. Okay, let's go ahead and review the sample document that I created. And for the sake of time, we'll go over the ones that candidates always struggle with to confirm the range that the welders qualify to based on the actual values. So let's start off with the welding process on line 13. According to the actual values, he qualified with GTAW and the range on line 31 states that he's qualified to weld with FCAW. If you guys know clause six, this does not sound correct. So let's take a look at the performance variables on 6.2, specifically note number one. A change in welding process except that welders qualified with GMAW spray, pole spray, or globular transfer are also qualified to weld with gas shielded FCAW and vice versa. Now, if the actual value had listed GMAW with any of the approved transfer modes, then the range qualified would be FCAW gas shielded or vice versa. But since it's not, this is considered an essential variable and I would mark this range as being incorrect. Keep in mind that there will be also multi processes that you have to validate and the same rule applies. Now let's get into the backing section, which is on line 15 where it shows the actual values the welder qualified with and it specifically states with backing. Now let's take a look at line 33, which says that he's qualified to weld with or without backing. But if we go back to class six and check out the essential variables, specifically note two, it mentions a deletion of backing. This is a key change since he qualified with backing, removing it would be outside the scope of his qualification. So really, he's only qualified to weld with backing. So based on that, I'd mark this question as incorrect. Okay, let's move on to base metals. And this one here gets a lot of people if you don't comprehend the question and you're looking for information in the wrong location. 
Like I mentioned before, don't confuse procedure and performance. They're not the same. So for line 18, the actual values list that the welder qualified with an M4 base metal and the range that he is qualified to on line 36 state that he is qualified to weld on M1 through M4. Now, if this was a procedure qualification question, that would be correct because he welded on M4 material and procedure qualification allow welding on lower M numbers per this statement here. However, since we're talking about performance and per table 13, if the welder qualifies on any M1 through M11 material, then he is qualified for production on the full M1 through M11. So I would mark this answer as being incorrect. Even though he welded on M4 material, the range that he is qualified for is M1 through M11. Okay, let's continue and move on to filler metals on F numbers on line 21. The actual values list there that he qualified on an F6 filler metal. Now let's take a look at the range that he's qualified to and that's listed on line 37. It lists there F1 through F6. So now what we do is we take a look at table 14 and see what information it gives us. Okay, so table 14 shows which filler metals a welder is allowed to use based on the performance test they passed. So on the first row, if a welder qualified using a certain filler metal, let's say it's an F5, they're allowed to use F5 and any lower F number like F4, F3, F2, or F1. Here's an important note. Welders can only use the F number that they qualified with or lower, not higher. Here's an example. If someone qualified with an F3, they can't use F4 or F5. So for the second row, this applies only to F6 filler metals. So if a welder qualified with an F6, they're only allowed to use an F6. No other F numbers unless it's a multi-process qualification that lists other welding processes with filler metals used. So based on this information on table 14, the range the welder is qualified to would only be F6 for line 37. Okay, let's move on to the weld deposit thickness for the welding process that he is qualified for. Line 24 states 0.875, and the range that he is qualified for on line 40 states unlimited. So let's go ahead and validate this and go to table 10. Since the test weldment used was on a plate, let's go ahead and plug in some information. So this one's fairly simple. There's two options. If the thickness of the test weldment is less than three quarters of an inch, he's allowed to deposit up to 2T. So for example, if this welder qualification test record document had an actual value that listed 5 eighths on line 24, since 5 eighths is less than three quarters of an inch per row one, then he is qualified to weld up to an inch and a quarter. All you had to do is multiply 5 eighths times two to get the maximum deposit thickness. And for fillet wells, it's unlimited. Now for the second option, since this test plate is 7 eighths, which is greater than 3 quarters of an inch, the deposit thickness is unlimited, and the fillet wells are also unlimited. Here's a pro tip reminder. If you guys see any welder that qualified with GMAW, pay extra attention to all the footnotes. Rules may change depending on the transfer mode that they used. So the range listed on line 40 is correct. He has allowed unlimited weld deposit. Let's move on to the final topic on this document, the welding position that the welders qualified for. So according to line 26 on the actual values, the welder qualified in the 3G position using plate. To understand what range of positions this qualification covers, let's refer to table 15. So start off by locating the row for plate groove and the 3G position. As you move across that row, you'll see the following. For groove welds, the welder is qualified to weld on plate and pipe over 24 inches in OD in the flat and vertical position. For fillet welds on both plate and pipe, the welder is qualified for flat, horizontal, and vertical positions. All of this qualification information should be documented on the welder qualification test record. This is how you verify the welder's approved welding range. All right, future CWIs, well, that's a wrap. If you guys found this video helpful, go ahead and arc strike that like button. It helps the algorithm share this content with other aspiring candidates just like you guys. 
If we hit over 100 likes in the first couple of weeks, I'll create more videos just like this one, covering different variables and multi-process scenarios to help you guys better understand this document to boost your guys' chances on passing this exam on the first try. So thanks for watching. Until the next one, guys.